This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And this is your host, Greg Gilbert. And uh, I have a wonderful guest on the phone with me today joining me for the 30th anniversary of Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. I have the wonderfully talented Michael Benier. Did I get that one right? You got it right. I got it right. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was a little slow set up here, but I'm really glad, you know, I like to introduce my guest, right? And, um, you know, I, I've never heard of a last name like that. Where does that originate? Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. I read my Bible, so there you go. <laughs> well, you know what? We're celebrating, of course, uh, the 30th anniversary of Jason Takes Manhattan, although a lot of people joke and call it Jason Takes Vancouver. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. But before we get into that, you know, I, I just wonder if you give us a little bit of your background, because I know you're a Canadian actor, you know, and we celebrate our Canadian actors here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm originally born and raised in Vancouver, Canada, and uh, I started acting uh, when I was about 17, and uh, Friday the 13th was, I think, the first movie I was ever in, feature film, and uh, I remember I had been working uh, for a few years in high school, and then it was about, it was 89, it was, and it's funny, recently I was moving from boxes in Vancouver. I found the original script from uh, Friday the 13th, and at the time, I believe it was March of, of, of 89, mm -hmm. and um, the working title of the film was called Ashes to Ashes. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to know it was a Friday the 13th film, and I just recently found the script, and I remember every mention of Jason in the movie is, is Ethan. They didn't want anyone to know that it was a Friday the 13th movie. So, um, yeah, it was March of... Uh, um, it was, I think, August of 89, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, this was just before he got the TV series uh, Neon Rider, where he played the guy who worked on the, on the ranch with uh, the main character. And, uh, and then later he's gone to uh, work with Johnny Depp, and he is the uh, executive for Johnny Depp's film company, if you, if you knew that. I did not know that. Yes. So that's what happened to Sam Sarkar, if you're wondering. <laughs> well, you know, I... Th there's, of course, that famous scene where, you know, Jason is, he's a murderer, you know, and yet somehow he's being made look like the hero in this one scene in the movie. That's right. He has a moral ground. Only, only he can kill the virgins, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I'm looking up the movie right now man, on my internet, and I didn't realize I have a name. My name is Jojo. Jojo. And yes. I, I was gang member number two, but my character's name is Jojo. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you talk about the death scenes, yeah, between you two, you know, because uh, yeah, you guys kind of got off in very, very nasty ways, and it's pretty. This is right about that time where audiences started to cheer Jason, and you know, there's something a little warped about that. <laughs> Sex before marriage, is that, is that 
No, he drowned as a boy and um, because uh, counselors were having sex and he drowned and his mother was the killer in the original film. And then uh, she got uh, off to, uh, at the end of the first film and then Jason took over after that. He wore a, um, a burlap sack over his head in the second film, and he gets his hockey mask in the third. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's, uh, that's my understanding, so that there was some sort of morality at play. Um, and for me, um, I really don't think I've ever seen any of the films before or since. Maybe I've seen the one where it's in versus Freddy Krueger. I might have seen that one. Okay. Um, Mm-hmm. And they wanted me to have some sort of uh, stick to it, uh, hair, so they gave me cornrows. But you can't see it because I have a bandana. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I had to keep my hair like that while we filmed, over the few days that we filmed. So I remember I kept my hair like that, I couldn't really wash it. And then, um, and then the actual death where my character is uh, smashed into the pipe was a stuff. Was you there during uh, the other guy's death scene where the needle was coming out through him? Sam, yeah. yeah, Sam's. Yeah. What was it uh, like working with Kane Hodder? Uh, Kane, I remember it very distinctly. He was a former stuntman at the time. He mm-hmm. did not play Jason from the beginning. You can tell me how many films he did, but he really owned the role. And I remember he, I think he had been a bit too much of a sort of burning, and he looked kind of scary mm-hmm. uh, underneath the mask. Uh, we didn't have too much to talk about. I was about 18 or 19 at the time. Yeah, and uh, I have interviewed Peter Mark Richmond twice on here. I gotta say, what a gracious guy! I love Peter Mark Richmond, and he really steals the film. And I know you were on the screen a few minutes with him. Do you remember uh, much about him? Yeah, the professor, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I remember, once again, I was 18 or 19. <laughs> Yeah, he um, had a great time making the film. He said it rained a lot, but <laughs> he was a great guy to talk to. And I think the other person I want to ask you about, of course, is Jensen Daggett, who ends up being uh, the target of you two. <laughs> uh, I remember she was American. She was also brought up in the States as well as Peter. Um, and uh, she was around my age, and she was very cool. I think we all went you know, playing pool one time or something like that. Uh, also in the movie was Kelly Hugh, who mm-hmm. went on to become a big star after that. Yeah. One of the first things. And uh, she was cool. I knew, I'm looking at the cast list, Gord Curry, who yep. I knew, uh, was friends at the time. Saffron, who I did a lot of voiceover with. And Saffron um, was doing film and television at the time. But we did cartoons together. I knew her. And she was a big uh, singer. Her father was uh, Bill Henderson of Chilliwack. Mm-hmm. So she was, uh, you know, she would do, you know, jingles and such. show was getting canceled at the time and I didn't know 
if I was going to be able to film the movie because I was under contract to write for the TV show. And Martin said that he was going to do the movie. And then they allowed me to uh, also go for a few days to film while I was writing this TV show called Pilot One. But yeah, Martin and I were really good friends at the time. He was on camera and I was, I was writing for a TV show for CBC. He was on camera and he was handling a camera in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Charlene Martin as well, you know, with that little design that she uh, had drawn on her, the seducive professor. Oh, I can't recall that, but uh, she was in the movie too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you think about the fact that, uh, you know, I know you're not uh, detailed on this franchise, but of course... Uh, Jason takes Manhattan. They t they took a chance with it, and it didn't d do real well. In fact, New Line ended up taking uh, the ninth film after this, and uh, I, I guess um, I guess due to budget restraints, I guess they couldn't shoot in New York. Um, I kind of got to wonder what it would have been like had the studio been a little more lenient and uh, given Rob Head and the budget he required. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple of scenes in Times Square which has nothing to do with us. There was just, you know, Kane or whoever was in the suit there in, in, in Times Square. And then there was the whole stuff on the subway. It mm -hmm. was supposed to be New York subway, but it was clearly not New York subway. It was the new subway that was built in Vancouver at the time. It was pristine. It was, it was brand new. So I'm sure the show would have Yeah, well, uh, any any uh, stories about working with Rob Hedden? Uh, my only recollection was they brought me in to do ADR. If you know what ADR is, is mm -hmm. post sound, post yep. sound of the film. And if you remember, my character is almost exclusively swearing. Yeah. So they needed me to, uh, you know, do replacement swears for the TV version or the airplane version of anybody going to watch that tonight in an airplane. Do you remember much about the premiere, or were you at the premiere? Oh, okay. Do you ever do the convention scene? Because I was wondering what the most interesting thing you've ever been asked to sign is. Okay. Which is on Amazon, and they're going to be talking about season four, which I have a big part of. 
Who, who, who do you think would win between Deadpool and Jason? <laughs> Deadpool, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was something a little different. I know there's some people complain about it being R-rated, but I actually loved the fact that it was edgier and took a chance. I had a lot of fun with Deadpool, and uh, Ryan Reynolds was great in it, and uh, you know Gina Carano being in it was wonderful. I loved her in Haywire. Talk about your experiences in uh, Deadpool. Yes. <laughs> My scene is uh, not the first scene in the film, but the first kind of storyline scene in the film, which is uh, I get out of a chopper and I'm playing a Serbian warlord, and there's some sort of arms deal between me and um, the actor who plays uh, Francis in the film. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, you worked with uh, Uva Bull in a couple of films. Uh, I love the movie Postal. I've had Uva Bull on my show twice, and I think he is so misunderstood in terms of these fights he has people in. And uh, and uh, he has told me, you know, that he only challenges people to fights that pan his movies without seeing them. You know. And uh, I loved Postal. I've I've had him and Zach Ward both on here twice, and and um, I thought that movie was hilarious. And of course, you played Muhammad. <laughs> Talk about that. We're in Far Cry. Far Cry. Yeah. yeah. Far Cry was with, uh, with the German movie star. And then the other one was, uh, he changed the title. And it was with uh, Michael Pere was in it as well, because Michael Pere worked with him a lot. Uh, oh, my goodness. I'm going to look it up here. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not seeing what that is either. Oh, it's Assault on Wall Street. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. No. And, uh, I mean, a lot of those uh, scenes in the movie was improvised. And he's like, just, you know, do something here like you've forgotten your keys, you don't know what you're doing. And, and I'm like, okay. Uh, and then when I went to do ADR in the movie, the woman said, I don't have a script. I don't know what you're saying in the scene here. I, you know, I said, I don't know either. We did it live. Someone should have written it down when we were filming it. So I had to watch the film and kind of figure out what was being said when we yeah, I, I enjoyed Postal. I, I know it's got a bad rap, but I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, and um, I know he's got this uh, reputation to be the worst filmmaker. I don't think Postal was an example of bad filmmaking. I actually think that was a very well done film. And I loved Zach Ward playing the everyman that's just getting crapped on by everybody. And... Um, I mean, there was some great humor there where he's in the middle of the shootout there and he's trying to find that closest number. <laughs> I mean, stuff like that is actually very funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the late Brooke Troyer was in the film. He was great. Uh, we had a really good time. I mean, I was there for a few weeks, three or four weeks during that movie. Yeah. I just remember that scene with Dave Foley when he stands up from the toilet and you just see this bottle of brown on the floor. Oh, yeah, I was like, he really went for it. Like, he doesn't care. He's going to be going for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've had Zach Ward on here a couple times. Jackie Tone has been on here as well, you know, and... Uh, Oh yeah. Well, I I love that coffee scene that she where she's dealing with the person that doesn't know how to get his order right cuz we've seen that so many times. Like I've seen that. I understood her frustration. <laughs> No, well, one thing that, that people need to understand, Uva's not going to box somebody for not liking his movie. M Uva's going to box somebody who's just out and out just panning his movie because they don't like him. And I agree with him, you know. I, I, thought, I don't think that's fair at all. Like, you, we mentioned Friday the 13th. I don't know how many times I've seen a review for Friday the 13th Part 3 where they say another group of camp counselors when camp counselors were in the first two and then after that was just teenagers getting together somewhere or, or young adults or whatever. And when I see stuff like that, I see very lazy film criticism. Well, they, they haven't seen the movie clearly. Exactly. And that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yep. And, uh, it's unfortunate, but what are you going to do? How long was uh, the boxing match? Very long? <laughs> Not very long. There was three or four guys in a row or something like that. And, uh, you know, it was embarrassing for these guys. And, uh, you know, I remember they kind of shook some of their hands afterwards. I'm sure it's online somewhere. Is it online? Oh, it could be. I, I should look that up. I do know that Uva said when I'm in Vancouver, if I'm ever in Vancouver, to, uh, he's got a restaurant uh, business going and he told me to stop by. So uh, I'm, I, I'm still in touch with him somewhat, you know, and uh, 
I've had uh, nothing but good reactions with him. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay Hollister I also had on the show here, too, from Postal. And and uh, she, she was used a little more, um, a little more in uh, Blubberella. But, uh, yeah, I, th- I thought that was a very funny movie. Um you have what was your uh, memories of Far Cry? I was there for I think two nights. We mm-hmm. filmed at the GVRD in Vancouver, and uh, that was uh, Till Schweiger was the star. Yeah, he was in Atomic Blonde, and yeah. also in Glorious Bastards. Right. So um, they just offered me this part as a mercenary, and I don't think I say much of the movie. I don't, I don't think. But um, I hung out with this guy, you know, Till, and we spoke for. You know, Yeah, and of course, you, you uh, Uva had you in. Uh, oh, and Emmanuel Yeah, and you were in Assault on Wall Street, of course, too. Another Uva Bull. So you you must have had a good relationship with Uva Bull. I'm actually sad that he's not doing movies anymore. But I saw the where he ranted on the line about that, you know, when he tried to raise money, and I really got him, you know, and so. But I'm glad he found a passion for, you know, his restaurant business. But I think this whole petition and stuff to get him to stop making movies, like, I'm sorry, but you want to talk about online bullying? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have, uh, want to promote that you're doing now? Well, I'm excited about the show The Expanse. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, charities that you're involved in that you want to plug on here? Not yet, no. No? Okay. And and any web pages or anything that uh, you want to plug on here? Yeah, if people want to follow me, it's my name, Michael Benger, on Instagram. Okay. Or or my Facebook page or my Twitter, if they want to do that. Okay. No, but I always like to open up so that anybody has any... uh, thing they want to plug I always open that up so no I you know we have you on here 30th anniversary of Jason Takes Manhattan although I gotta say out of your films I gotta say I liked either Deadpool or uh, Postal best <laughs> between those oh, two so, yeah yeah I um Jason Takes Manhattan doesn't do it for me humor wise the way those two did so <laughs> Yeah, and of course, Deadpool was shot in Canada. I don't understand these movies shot in Canada, but they're they're American movies. Like I miss it when Canada had Canadian films. I don't get that. I don't know. I wish we could call Deadpool a Canadian film. <laughs> Wouldn't that be? Yep. Well, anyway, Michael, it was wonderful having you come on here today and take time out of your schedule. Uh, is there anything else you want to discuss before we close off? No, but thank you for contacting me, and it's amazing that something I did 30 years ago is still resonating with people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Before you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? Have you ever been out this way before? Not yet. No. <laughs> Most people don't even know what New Brunswick, Canada is. <laughs> I know where it is. Sure. Oh, well, yeah, well, most Canadians do know where we are. But yeah. in the States, they're amazed that there's a, a place in Canada that's uh, t- um, time-wise above Toronto, you know. And, yeah, we're four hours ahead of L.A., so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on here today. And, uh and it was a real blessing to talk to you, and uh, I wish you luck. I, I wish you the best in the future, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Yeah, take care.